Good morning, folks. We've got some more eye candy today at the stellar formation, galactic, and nebula level. A record cold event, a record snow event, and the Carrington event. But we're starting, as always, with the last 24 hours on our star. It was a calm day on the sun with minor filament destabilizations and pops around the limbs. The Earth-facing sunspots are small and not complex, meaning that the primary space weather watch for today and likely tomorrow as well are the plasma filaments, which are numerous on the Earth-facing disk today. You can see that better here in 304 angstroms of ionized helium. There are at least eight substantial filaments in eruptive position to be relevantly geoeffective. We'll be on that eruption watch today. Up next, data reanalysis confirms the record cold during that Chiefs game in January. It was so bad that several people in the stands got frostbite and have had to receive amputations making it the worst cold event to strike any football game on record. Speaking of cold news, earlier this month, Jackson Hole received a record snowfall, both in the town and at the mountain resort. Still remember Al Gore telling us about 25 years ago that the end of record snow and cold were about to be a thing. Anyway, we're off to the infrared looks at the galaxy. For as much as astronomers study the heavens, the far side of the Milky Way is actually still mostly a mystery. Current and future missions are gaining the ability to use infrared to peer through the dense galactic plane and discover what the other side of the galaxy actually looks like, a work in progress. Coming next to the latest James Webb images of tendrils in a supernova remnant, a nebula. The near Cam and Miri devices on James Webb were able to reveal much more detail than Hubble did, offering insights into how the post-explosion material has changed and interacted over time. Up next, we've got a sped-up simulation run of magnetic activity impacting star formation. While this is baby step number one, it is a good one, because what astronomers need most of all to understand stellar birth is to add electromagnetism to the gravity collapse models that have persisted for years. Here they have found the ease with which magnetohydrodynamic forces fragment the accumulating material into multiple protostars. If they can include the Hall and Zeeman effects in the future, they may be able to ascertain how little the gravity model was needed in the first place. Last but not least, we have a paper on the greatest solar flare ever observed, the 1859 Carrington event. They have found the carbon-14 signature of the event in tree rings. It had been thought that you might need a bigger super flare like in 774 to make one, but they have now discovered that the Carrington event produced one as well. An appropriate discovery here for the 35th anniversary of the solar storm Quebec blackout on March 13th, 1989. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.